Hello, and welcome to GIS 215. This is a short video to introduce the topics that we'll be covering this semester and a little bit of introduction to the course. This course is entitled GIS Data Models, and this short PowerPoint will be an introduction into geographic data models. So, to start, let's just discuss models briefly. What is a model? We define a model as, a, as an abstract and well-defined system of concepts that gives us a common set of vocabulary and terms that we can use to describe, discuss, and reason about things. There are more different types of models out in the world than we could count, but just to give you a few examples, models are used to do things like explore the economy. We have economic models. We also have models that look at the spread of disease through communities. We also look at weather models. We look at soil erosion models. We look at models of water systems to determine how to make them more efficient. The same with utility systems. So models are commonly used in all types of industries and disciplines. To look at real world type of phenomena and try to better understand them. <clears throat> so this course and geographic information systems in general are all about geographic data models. So geographic information systems are built using these formal models that describe how things are located in space. So a geographic data model helps us to better understand and describe how things are located in the world around us. A geographic data model defines the vocabulary for describing and reasoning about the things that are located on the earth. These are the foundation on which all geographic information systems are built. So this is a very important concept in geographic information systems. It helps us to define and understand the types of data that we use to store and organize and work with in our geographic information systems. So just as an example, the old common paper map that we've all seen, maybe a folded trail guide or a, or a transportation map, it's a familiar model of geographic information. We use a map to help us better understand the reality of the world around us. It's actually a scaled model of reality and it uses some conventions and some rules that we can all agree on so that we can have a common starting point to understanding the information on a map. So some of these common conventions and rules are things like how the coordinates are stored. This is related to map projections. How we symbolize lines and polygons. How we apply text to the map and many other conventions and rules. A map can be used to answer questions about the reality it represents, and that's one of the biggest powers of a map. You can answer questions like how far is the distance between two objects, or maybe how long a particular trail or object is. You can also look and see what objects are adjacent to another or connected we use maps for this kind of analysis all the time. <clears throat> so essentially, a paper map is a tool for, or a model, a tool or model for communicating facts about geography visually. So an important thing to understand is that we're talking about communicating graphically. This is a type of graphic communication or geographic communication. Maps often help us understand relationships that might not even occur to us as specific questions without having a map to look at. So maps often bring to light the relationship between 
things that we might not have noticed otherwise. You may have an idea that the Tennessee Valley has a higher uh, rate of asthma in children because of all the coal plants and the way the weather patterns take air through the valley. However, you wouldn't really understand this unless you could see a map that showed concentrations of asthma cases and where coal plants are and maybe even the prevailing winds and the direction that the winds go through the valley. So a digital geographic data model defines their own sets of concepts and relationships and they must be understood before you can expect to create or interpret your own data model. These concepts relate to how your, you model geographic information in your computer rather than, as in the previous example, on paper. So digital geographic data models help us to better understand the world around us using digital structures to, to store this information in a computer and of course they can then be applied to a map but and this is a little bit different than, than just looking at a map. It does work just like maps because we know the rules of conventional map reading like north is up or at least a north arrow tells us which way north is. Blue lines are rivers um, we have hierarchies of roads and areas that show us urban versus forested. And you can find a lot of this information in the legend of a regular map. <coughs> so you'll also often see um, another term, data formats, when discussing these ways that we store geographic information in a computer. So data models versus data formats. First and foremost, I want you to know these terms are often used interchangeably, and really, that's okay. Technically, a data model or data models are a broad, conceptual way of understanding the world around us. If you've taken a GIS course with me, you've certainly heard of the two major types of data models we work with in a GIS. This is the vector and raster data models. Both of, these, both of these data models have a, a set of concepts and rules that describe and define them that help us to have a common set of language to talk about these data models. For instance, the vector data model is made up of points, lines, and polygons. It's used to store things out in the real world that are discrete in nature or have a definite starting and stopping point. Um, each point, line, and polygon has attributes. The points, lines, and polygons are defined by a series of coordinates, points made up of a pair of coordinates. If you connect two points, you have a line, two or more points, and if the lines enclose, you have a polygon. So those terms, point, line, polygon, coordinates, discrete, attributes all should be familiar to you and you should uh, relate those to the vector data model. The raster data model is a gridded cell structure. Each cell or pixel has the same dimensions. The dimensions of the pixel define the resolution of the data. Raster data are better suited at modeling phenomena out in the real world that are continuous in nature, like temperature and um, precipitation. Both of these data models have application in GIS. Some are better suited for some applications than others. <coughs> so data models, vector and raster data models. Within this broad uh, conceptual way of understanding the world, this broad uh, umbrella of raster and vector, there are individual data formats. So the data formats are the actual computer structures we use to store and display information digitally. So that's what a data format is. A data format allows us to store information in our computer and then display it back to you. 
data formats apply the concepts and relationships from a data model in a very specific way to specific data structures. So you're very familiar with many data formats if you've ever worked with a computer. When you work with a computer and you make files, they are stored in data formats. Really common data formats are things like Word documents and text files and PDF files and zip files. All of these data formats are used daily when you work with a computer. You are constantly creating and storing data in data formats. With the GIS, we store our GIS data in GIS data formats. So there are data formats that allow us to store and display geographic information in a computer. So a few common vector data formats that we see in the GIS world are the shapefile, CAD data, coverages, and geodatabases. Geodatabases can store many types of, of uh, data, raster and vector, as well as others. So um, these are not all of the vector data formats out in the world. There are many other GIS vector data formats, as well as some other vector data formats that are not GIS related. You may have heard of SVG files or Adobe Illustrator files. These are also vector-based formats. As far as raster goes, there are many um, GIS-based raster data formats, like the first two bullets you see, the Esri grid and the SID files. There's also many other raster formats that can be applied to the GIS field, but are not always used for GIS fields. You've probably all seen a JPEG, like with every picture taken from a phone is a JPEG and TIFF files. The thing about raster data when it's applied to the GIS setting is that, and vector data is that they, they all have coordinates assigned to the, to the data formats. Now this is by no means an exhaustive list of, of data formats here. Uh, we, we focus a lot on Esri based GIS data formats. There are proprietary data formats and there are also open data formats. We'll hopefully hit on some of the open data formats this semester as well, but we focus a lot on Esri data formats. <clears throat> so if you've taken a class from me before, you've, you've certainly heard me talk about data formats, and um, this is a point that I, I make in every class. All data formats have advantages and disadvantages. I like to give the example of the common data formats, Word documents and text documents, because new students in the GIS field, when they're learning about all these different data formats, get confused as to why there's so many and, and what to do with each one. So I want to give you an example of two common data formats that you work with often, the Word document and the text file. If I were to ask most students which one is a better data format, most people would say, oh, a Word document, because you can do so much more with a Word document. Word documents have fancy formatting options. You can insert images. You can create tables of contents and bibliographies. And that's great. However, what if you don't need all of those fancy um, format or fancy options? What if you just wanted to write a letter to your mother? A text document would allow you to do that just like you can with a Word document. So a text document, you can't do all the fancy formatting, and many of them you cannot even insert an image into. But the question is, what are you trying to do with the data format? If you just want to write a grocery list, a text file is a much easier file to work with because it takes less computer resources. You don't need all the fancy formatting. You don't have to have Microsoft Word. So in the GIS world, we often store coordinates and text files. We could put them in a Word document, but it's, it's overkill. So depending on what you're doing, one format may be more advantageous in, in one situation than another. So. How about all these spatial data formats? All formats have evolved over time 
as technology and software advances. So if you are working in the Esri world, working with shapefiles and geodatabases are really common. If you're working with Google Earth, KML files are really common. So depending on what you're doing, the software you're working in, each GIS data format has advantages and disadvantages. These are the kind of things that we'll be going over this semester. Of course, you can convert between one data format to another, so don't worry so much about what happens if you're in one format and you want to be in another. There's always a way to convert from one to another. So that's it for the brief introduction. This week is a pretty light week as we get started and create our Esri accounts and load our software and, and do a lot of bookkeeping stuff. Next week we'll get started with our, our actual classwork.